Cool. So um, first of all, I want to say um, welcome to this webinar on upcycling, recycling and gardening on a budget. Um, we ask you to please remain muted during the presentation. Um, I've got a lot to pack in this 15 minutes. So um, if you have any questions during the session, please write them in the chat section. Um, and we'll be sending out a follow up email with the answer to any of your questions in that um, just gives us more chance to sort of get through everything in the session. So I'll start with a bit of an intro. If you came to the Pete webinar um, last week, you will have heard this bit already. So I'm sorry. Um, I'm Naomi. I'm part of the Wild Stockport team um, for Cheshire Wildlife Trust. I've spent the last year working in Stockport with residents, schools and community groups to help bring wildlife back to the town. And we've just found out this week that we've got funding to extend that project for another two years. So that's very exciting. Um, a little bit about Cheshire Wildlife Trust. With a county's leading conservation charity, we make space for local wildlife that is enjoyed and valued by all. We own and manage nature reserves and we work in partnership with landowners, local authorities to promote nature's recovery, as well as nature based solutions to local, national and global problems. We work with local communities, helping everyone do more for nature where they live from getting people outdoors and feeling better to protecting their local world spaces. We rely heavily on support and membership from Cheshire residents. So if you enjoy this webinar, I urge you to consider becoming a member of this great organisation. So in this webinar, um, I'm going to talk you through some different ways to recycle and upcycle things from around the home for use in your gardens. Um, we're also going to explore some tips and tricks into gardening on a budget, including where to look for secondhand products. I'm aware we had a question about how upcycling isn't the perfect option, as stuff will often still get thrown away just further down the line. And you are right. But we're approaching upcycling as an option to use items that already exist instead of buying stuff new. It's about changing your mindset into thinking creatively about things that you already have rather than sourcing new products for everything. If you wanted to plant some seeds, for example, instead of going to the shop and buying seed trays, you could find something in your house or recycling bin that suits. Or instead of going out and buying an expensive pond liner, you might find you have an old washing up bowl in your cellar that you could bury into the ground instead. So this webinar looks at upcycling as a way of reducing waste rather than eliminating it completely, um, which in this day and age is almost impossible. We want to make these actions easy and accessible. And if that means not being perfect, but still making a small difference, that's what matters here. So to begin with, we're going to look at some things you can easily upcycle to make gardening that little bit easier. First, we're going to look at. So you can make planters out of almost anything, as long as it's made out of a stable material that won't break down when it gets soggy. Um, it has room for soil and root growth and it has some sort of drainage, usually in the form of holes in the bottom. You can plant in all sorts of creative items. It's worth noting that the smaller the area for soil, the less nutrients the plants will get. It will probably not grow very big and you'll have to water it more as it will dry off. Really quickly. This happens a lot with drain pipe planters. They look lovely and aesthetic and are a good way of planting vertically. But you need to think carefully about the requirements of the plant you're growing in it. Otherwise, it may struggle to survive. Try and find planters that are nice and deep. Um, this gives room for the roots to grow, giving more chance for the plant thriving in its new home. Um, the, material, the material of your planter being nice and stable. The exception here is when starting seeds. Cardboard is the perfect material for starting seeds in because by the time the seeds are ready to be transplanted, 
into a larger pot or into the ground, the cardboard will have broken down enough from the moisture to potentially plant that straight into the ground along with the plant. It will continue to break down as the, in the soil as the roots grow. I like to start my seeds in toilet paper tubes. You can cut the bottom and you fold it in to create a little pot, which is the perfect size for seeds. And you can also use egg boxes in a very similar way. Next up, we have mini. Including some sort of water source in your garden is one of the best things you can do for wildlife. And what's great is it really doesn't matter what size, even the smallest pond made out of a bowl will have great benefit to wildlife in your garden. You can make a mini pond out of any watertight container. You can bury it in the ground or you can keep it above ground. If burying it in the ground, ensure that there is a ramp or a stick or some steps leading in and out to help the wildlife access it. If keeping it above ground, consider also having some sort of steps or ramp for wildlife to reach it from the outside, as well as the ramp on the inside. Consider creating lots of levels using rocks and bricks. This creates hiding places for critters and wildlife. And then some sort of oxygenating pond plants are very useful. And these can be bought from most garden centres and planted into your pond in little baskets or bags to allow for the water flow. We have a really good guide on our website with more in-depth information on how to plant a mini, how to install a mini pond. Now, if you want to grow things that require a more moist, humid environment, such as tomatoes, chilies, and peppers, have a look at in your plastic recycling before heading out to buy any specialist equipment. You can create the warm, humid environment of a greenhouse just by placing um, a plastic container to uh, the top of a pot bottle or even an old plastic umbrella over your plants. Finally, we're going to talk about what you can do. Pallets are easy to source, sometimes free to source, and are a very welcome addition to most gardens. You can make compost heaps out of them. You can stack them into giant bug hotels. I've made a potting bench for my garden out of pallets. Um, and you can also plant in them. By laying them vertically, you can fill the plant and plant up the gaps and this makes it really easy to define um, your planting rows and it also helps to suppress weeds in between the plants or by propping it up vertically you can create a vertical planter that doesn't take much space up at all. Uh, use some breathable weed membrane you can staple it on or you can use a hammer and nails um, to create bottoms to the compartments and then you can plant it up like any other planter. You can even get creative and paint it in funky colours. So next we're going to have a look at ways um, to source cheap plants and other materials on a budget. Beginning with herbs from the supermarket. Now supermarkets are by no means the most ethical places to be sourcing your plants, but let's be honest, they're convenient and a lot of people find them very useful. I've had quite a few successful herb plants bought from the veg aisle of supermarkets. If you're a regular shopper at Asda, you'll notice they've started selling their herb plants in paper bags rather than plastic pots to encourage you to then plant them at home. The only thing I'd say is supermarket herbs do tend to be quite overcrowded in their pot, which is often what leads to their early demise on your kitchen window ledge. It's good to take them out of the pack, release them from the soil and either sacrifice some of the plant or split it up into multiple pots. This gives the roots a chance to resettle and grow a nice strong herb plant. Next, we're looking at cuttings and propagation. So if you have a friend, for example, who has a plant that you like the look of, instead of buying one new, you could always see if they will allow you to take a cutting. If cut correctly, a lot of plants can sprout new roots 
and you'll be able to grow a brand new plant. Three. Gardener's world has a lot of resources about taking cuttings. Some grow better in water and then plant, transplanted into soil. Some grow better planted straight into the soil. But there are some special techniques to growing successful cuttings. So definitely do your research if this is an option you're pursuing. Next up, we've got seed harvesting. Now, if you've ever been foraging before, you'll know it's illegal to uproot a plant and take that whole. However, you're allowed to harvest seeds from a plant as well as flowers and foliage within reason. Example plants you could easily harvest seeds from include poppies, calendula or marigold, uh, nasturtium, wild garlic and tree nuts such as acorns and cob nuts if the squirrels haven't got to them first. <laughs> Make sure if you're foraging seeds you do so from a plentiful supply as a lot of wildlife relies on seeds for food. Also, make sure you're not trespassing on private land and you're only taking what you need personally and not planning on using your foraged plants for monetary gain, as that's illegal. You can also harvest seeds from supermarket fruit and veg. I've successfully grown peppers, tomatoes and lemons from supermarket fruit, as well as creating nice foliage from an avocado pip. I doubt you'll ever make a full, manage a full avocado fruit though in this climate. But you can also grow garlic plants from a regular supermarket bulb of garlic and you can chip supermarket potatoes for growing at home. If doing this, it's best to buy organic to ensure they have, haven't been pre-treated with chemicals. Now, local communities may have plant and seed swap schemes going on. If not, it's a good idea to maybe try setting up one yourself. It's quite common to grow too many seedlings than you need when planting from seed. So this is a great opportunity to give your seedlings a new home rather than on the compost heap. And perhaps in return, you might pick up some different seedlings for yourself. You can also do this with seeds. Sometimes you just don't need 500 cabbage plants, but someone else might. Finally, I want to point you in the direction of some places to source free or cheap items. FreeCycle is an international database of people giving away things for free. You pop in your postcode and it comes up with local groups and it's always a surprise what you find on there. You can also request items. So if you if what you need isn't on there, you can put, a, put it up as a wanted post and you never know someone might have one hiding in their garage that they forgot they had. Next we have Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace. Now neither of these are completely safe or reliable so use your own judgment but again people give away or sell for cheap all sorts of products and I personally have found some real gems. If you're in need of wood or wood chip, perhaps for a raised bed or for some mulch, it's always worth seeing if your local timber merchants have any offcuts or slightly damaged wood going to waste. Tree surgeons sometimes have wooden logs that they'd be willing to give away or even wood chip. Bricks and other building materials, again, can be found really easily on places like Facebook Marketplace, or you could try a local building yard or a salvage yard. I hope that was helpful. We'll send out this presentation along with the answers to any questions probably next week. Um, we also have a really great upcycling guide that we'll send as a PDF in our follow up email. Um, also, please check the links on this PowerPoint um, and we'd love to see your progress and your updates on social media. But, but for now, thank you for joining and I hope you have a really lovely afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.